Welcome to the Self Made Book Channel. I'm Bianca Miller Cole. And I'm Byron Cole. And today we are interviewing the lovely Louise, who is CEO of Shubs.com. So, welcome, welcome. Louise. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank you so much for having is, me. This is a service that I've actually used myself, so I'm quite excited. But can you tell everyone a bit about the business and what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's great to hear that you use the service. Yeah. I know a bit about it already. Always like to meet a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so Shubs is the platform for discovering and booking tickets to urban events. So it's kind of like the ticket master for urban events. Mm. It's where you go to on a perhaps a Friday night when you're trying to find something to do with, you know, your friends. You're not sure, but you know you love urban and you're looking for perhaps an R&B and hip hop club night. Mm -hmm. You can go on to Shubs, discover a great event and buy tickets to those events. And how did you come up with this fantastic idea? Because it is a fantastic idea. Oh, thank you. And it's kind of one of those things where you think, this is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there needs to be one go-to place for all of the urban events, right? So how did you come up with this and, and when? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I, so my background actually is investment banking, okay. so completely different from yeah. events. So um, while I was at university, I've always been involved in music um, and events. So I was organising university events, I was managing a hip-hop artist, working for record labels. But after university, I thought, okay, you know, perhaps I should do something that make my, you know, sex with my parents. Exactly, yeah. my, exactly. My parents. have been there. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if I said I'm going to do the music thing, they mm. wouldn't quite understand that. Mm. So I thought, okay, fine. I'll do what they want and use my degree and get into banking. So, spent about, probably about six years in banking, actually. But, you know, during those few years, I kind of had the itch, like, I really want to get back into events and music. Mm. I love that. It's my passion. So, um, on the side, I started helping event organisers, like, put on their events and managed a hip-hop artist, a um, fantastic artist. And together, we did a number of gigs. And it was through that experience, really, that I realised how difficult it was, particularly for a hip-hop urban artist mm -hmm. to promote their events and sell tickets for mm -hmm. their events. Whenever we were organising it, it was literally like handing out flyers to people on the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was trying to sort out the guest list by people texting me their names mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, surely there's a better way. Because mm -hmm. like, obviously in my day job, I had these sophisticated you know, computers and tools in investment banking. And yet in the evenings, like I realised how archaic you know, the tools and systems were for these promoters. But it probably wasn't actually until I had the experience of actually going to buy a ticket myself mm -hmm. um, that the light bulb moment sort yeah. of happened. So um, I was in charge of organising the night out with my friends. There was about 10 of us or so. So I called the event organiser. Mm -hmm. And actually how I found the event was through a stack of flyers. Okay. So, you know, as you as yeah. you do, when you yeah. go to one event, Literally everyone gives you loads of flyers. Yeah. Yeah. So I was literally like, where are we going to go? Yeah. So I went through a stack of flyers, um, found the telephone number, called the organiser and said, right, there's 10 of us. You want to be able to get like discounted tickets and a table sorted. He said, fine, you have to come and meet me. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. I remember those dodgy, what feels like a dodgy meeting. Yeah. Where you go and hand over some cash in exchange for these funny little yeah. tickets. Oh, exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so I was like, okay. And, he, and I think he was like in South London, I'm yeah. in North London. So I was like, that's not going to work. He said, okay, that's fine. I'm actually coming to North London in a few hours. So meet me in the supermarket car park. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's out in the public as well. Yeah, so if yeah, it does yeah, go yeah. wrong, it's a little bit dodgy. Yeah, I can like yeah. run to the supermarket. So got to the car park and he was actually late. So because the car park was literally like round the corner from my house, I just sort of, you know, ran out, thought I'd get the tickets and run back in. On the way there, it started to rain. So I'm like soaked, it's raining, yeah. I'm annoyed, I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah. So when he finally like, you know, arrives, I just go into a bit of a rant and I'm like, next time put this online, this is a waste mm. of my time, yeah, and surely absolutely. yours. Yeah. And then he sort of explained to me, well, actually, it's not that easy. Like, where am I going to put it? Yeah. You know, the big sort of ticketing websites don't showcase these types of events, mm -hmm. um, particularly if they're small, medium size. And that kind of reminded me of when I was organising events, yeah. you know, but that was probably out a few years ago. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's true. Like, nothing's, mm -hmm. nothing's changed. I thought mm -hmm. everything will be online. So I went back home only to really prove him wrong. So I thought I'll do a bit of research mm -hmm. and yeah. say, look, here's a link. Yeah. Next time, put it online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I actually found out he was right and there wasn't anything out there. And I thought, right, I'm going to do it. <laughs> just, just like that. Well, I just well, thought, well, I'm gonna, and what I'm year was this? this? What year did you make that decision? Oh, so this was probably like 2010. Uh, yeah, 2010. Okay. Yeah, so 2010, I made that decision. I was like, right, I'm going to do this. 
And you know, I'm just the kind of person that just gets going. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I, I was actually looking back on some old emails, mm. and I remember the day, like after I sent an email to my friend, I was like, "No one's doing this. I think there's a gap. I'm gonna do it." Yeah, yeah. And then by the week after, I'd already set up set up an appointment with my local enterprise center to meet up with a business advisor. Like mm. I was like, mm. "Let's yeah. just do this." Yeah. You know. How did you come up with the name? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I really wanted something that kind of spoke to the community, essentially, and wasn't going to be something like Tickets Are Us or Events mm. Are Us. I wanted mm. something that would stand out from the crowd because, you know, aside from the fact that ticketing perhaps wasn't, not all events were ticketed online, there were other event listing sites. So I wanted it to stand out. Um, and I just kind of got a few friends together and mm. we just kind of thought about, okay, what are these events called? And from the, like, the first suggestion was like, Shubs. You know, it's shubs.com. That's yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it is. It's going to be your website <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for Shubs. Yeah. And actually, for anyone who doesn't know who's watching this, yeah. um, Shubs means party. So, you know, especially in the urban community, perhaps quite a London term. Um, but I think it actually originates I feel like from. It's a generational term, like Shabin. It wasn't yeah. like originally, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you ask your mum or something, it yeah. wasn't. It was a Shabin and, and then it was a balls. Shubs. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Right. So, yeah, that would often mean like a party or a house mm. party. Mm. And you always knew you were going to have a good time. You're yeah. going to a Shubs, you yeah. know, you know, like yeah. it kind yeah, of yeah, conjures yeah. up that kind of, yeah, we're going for a good night out. Yeah. So, that was like the first name we came up with straight away. And then we had other names. Mm. And and then I think as, as most things happen, you always go back to your original mm-hmm. yeah. idea and realise that was the best one. So yeah, we sort of stuck on that and yeah, mm. created ships.com. So when you say you created it, you know, you had this great idea, you went to the Enterprise Centre, did you leave your job straight away or did you continue to kind of do both at the same time? Yeah, I continue to do both, okay. definitely. So uh, it was actually quite a, a sort of long process to mm. actually kind of get the website built and everything like that. So I did a whole bunch of research, I put together a business plan, but I did all that whilst I was working and they were at some intense times. Mm. I remember I'd get home in the evening, sort of about maybe seven or so, um, have dinner and then I would either like work till two o'clock in the morning or go to sleep and then get up at midnight and then work mm. throughout, you know, throughout the night. So I literally, I think I was probably managing like, you know, a few hours sleep, um, you know, while I was trying to manage the boat. For how long? Oh yeah, probably for about over a year. Really? I think it was. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe just under a year, maybe nine months or so. So we always get asked that question: Should I just leave my job, or yeah. should I continue, you know, to work my nine to five and start my business in the five till nine? And like, what would you say, having done the, you know, the the having a business and having a job scenario? Would you say that's the best option, or would you going back? Would you have just jump ship and start it? Um, well, so, so it was nine months when I had the idea or so, okay. but when I was ready to launch the website, when I launched the website, um, I think it was only probably like three months or so mm. after once, once it was launched, I had three months of working and running the business and then I quit and went full time. Okay. I think my advice would be, you know, whatever is comfortable to you. I mean, I, I do think like a lot of business is taking risks. You've got to kind of, you know, as I say, face, you know, feel the fear or and face the fear do or do it, it anyway, anyway yeah. essentially, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what you find in most entrepreneurs, that they are really courageous. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be a risk taker. And mm-hmm. if you're someone that's quite risk averse, then you're probably not going to be a, you know, a successful entrepreneur business, in, all, yeah. in, all, in, all, in all likelihood. And so, you know, I would say, you know, if, if you know, you would like to kind of save money or kind of, you know, work through a, a kind of a beta or kind of a... Uh, a sort of a, you know a period of testing your mm. idea in the market before you quit a job I think that's understandable but you know I wouldn't probably leave it longer than a year I'd probably try and you know get onto it yeah. as soon as possible yeah. and just put your full effort into mm. it you know because you know there's only so many hours in the day right yeah. and if you're going to give something a go you should give it a full full go a full go that safety net sometimes you just have to remove it don't you and yeah. just yeah it's like sink or swim yeah, mm. absolutely, mm. absolutely. And you know what as well, there's, there's nothing better actually than having that kind of pressure to motivate you mm. yeah. as well, yeah. right? When you've got bills to pay. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. no, absolutely, I know yeah. that yeah. for sure. No salary anymore, yeah. you're like, I now no need to make blanket. this work. Yeah. I know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, for those who know, like, you know, bankers are well paid, right? Yeah. So yeah. I was going yeah. from a well paid job yeah. to kind of like nothing to mm. start off with, right? Yeah. 
Um, I had bills to pay. Sure. And so it was like, right, ha, ha, what, what ideas can I do now? Mm. Like, well, how else can I kind of make money? I need to get on the phone. Yeah. You know, if, if yesterday I called 50 event organizers, today I've got to call 100. Yeah. Like, I've got to get through it, yeah, you yeah. know, and stuff. And I think having that kind of pressure definitely kind mm. of just pushes you to think about creative ideas to make your business successful. Mm. So I want to share with the audience, whilst I kind of know the answer to this, how big or how successful Shubs has become. So can you give us an idea of users and maybe some turnover? Yeah, absolutely. happy to talk about users and stuff. So um, yeah, so Shubs, you know, from basically a business I started by myself in my bedroom, yeah. um, you know, is now used by, you know, well now it's over 300,000 or so Londoners have signed up yeah. to the platform. Yeah. It's predominantly based in London, I would yeah. say. We do have a few events outside of London. Yeah. Um, but the great thing as well, I mean, we probably get now over 2 million views onto the site as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So how, people. How Frequently, how that's a month per month yeah wow. so two million page views a month on, on, the, on the website Excellent. so people are using it as a resource to find great events which yeah. is absolutely fantastic um, and the great thing is we're now work we started off as I mentioned focused perhaps on club nights and we still have a lot of great club nights but I'm really proud of the fact that we've got a wide range of events we even have festivals now we have okay. concerts yesterday um, so we had Chris Rock over at the um, O2 Arena. We were oh, one of the ticket sellers excellent. for that. Mm. Um, you know, and that was ourselves and Ticketmaster, you know, okay. selling wow. tickets, yeah, 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 which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, about a month ago or so, we did Future as well at the O2 yeah, Arena. Um, we've got festivals happening in Croatia, in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. So we're now doing events abroad as well. Mm. So from, you know, this business that was just myself, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we've now also grown the team as well. Yeah. So we have an actual office. It's not yeah, just in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, um, and also what most people don't know as well, which I perhaps will touch on a bit later as well, is that I, when I realized that, okay, this is actually building some traction. I mean, as I said, when it was just me, uh, you know, within uh, for about a year or so, I kind of looked at the numbers and we had like 26,000 users. Mm. I remember thinking, where did 26,000 users yeah, come yeah. from? Yeah. I was like, right, I should, I should do, this could maybe be bigger than I even thought. I mean, I, you know, I, I thought this was a big idea, mm. um, but I could maybe go global with this. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's kind mm. of what I started to think. So then I looked at other companies that have gone global, mm -hmm. um, particularly companies that have started by young entrepreneurs, similar yeah. to myself, similar, similar background. And I realized there was kind of like a common theme that a lot of them either had got some really good sort of uh, uh, funding, for mm -hmm. example, uh, from a range of investors, mm -hmm. or they had either started or kind of like nurtured their business in Silicon Valley, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was seeing. I was like, there's this place where people go, a bit like mm -hmm. if you want to be an actress, you go to Hollywood, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, what is this place? So mm -hmm. I literally booked a ticket, went mm -hmm. over to Silicon Valley, um, actually also rented an apartment in Mountain View, which is where Google's head office is mm. and Facebook as well, yep. and thought, right, I'm going to soak it up and learn as much as possible wow. from these entrepreneurs that yeah, build global yeah. businesses. Yeah. Um, and then I was fortunate to get into an accelerator program. So you just turned up there? You just you just thought I'm gonna book a ticket. I'm gonna go and absorb the energy. Yeah, yeah. And then Absolutely. you managed to yeah, navigate yeah, your way yeah, into yeah. an accelerator yeah, program. Yeah. So tell us about that because some people yeah. are so scared about just taking that step. You know, just really just saying I'm gonna go. Faith, I leave yeah. my faith. Yeah. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do exactly I'm gonna where I need work. to be, and I'm gonna make it work. Yeah. You're saying that's what you did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I just really felt like I've got something here, and I want this to be big. You know. Mm. And what was also interesting is the accelerator program. I, before I applied, I actually noted one of their sort of uh, sort of small print terms, mm -hmm. which said, um, you know, we don't really like um, accepting solo founders that are not technical. Now, I was a one-person company. <laughs> I'm a solo founder, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not technical. I've yeah. never coded anything. Yeah. You know, I, I I created the concept of the website, and I worked with a developer who I you know consulted sure. to contract to build the website. But I'm not technical. Sure. But I thought whatever like I'm gonna apply anyway yeah, you know yeah, rules yeah. are meant to be broken yes. right yes. Um, I'm gonna apply I'm gonna tell them why I deserve to get in although I don't kind of fit the criteria and just see what happens mm. um, and that's what I did yeah and I think like you know I thought at least I want to try yes mm -hmm. because if you don't even try 
you know, who, who knows what could happen? Yeah. I'd rather get, if I am going to get a definitive no, I'd rather get a definitive no for them mm. rather than talking myself out of yeah. actually taking an opportunity and going for something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so I was in Silicon Valley, applied for this program. For those who are not familiar with Y Combinator, um, they've supported companies such as Airbnb, so Airbnb went through Y Combinator in 2009. Mm-hmm. At the time, they were, I think, you know, doing a few thousands pounds, thousand dollars or so, like literally low thousands mm-hmm. okay. a week. Yeah. And as you know, they are a billion dollar company now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, companies such as Dropbox as mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah. Twitch, um, for those that don't know Twitch, Twitch is really interesting. It's the ESPN for gaming. Okay. Wow. So it's where people go to watch other people play games. Right. Which wow. I... <laughs> who knew that was a thing? Yeah, yeah. computer okay. games. Yeah, who yeah. knew that was a thing? I didn't yeah. really get it. But obviously it is a big it idea. A because yeah. Amazon bought um, Twitch in 2016 for $1 billion. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's a huge... Yeah. This is a good place to be networking. Yeah, it's a good place to be networking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. And, and the founders of Twitch mm. are around 30 years, 30 years old. Amazing. Also, Yeah, and they started in their 20s. Phenomenal. It's an incubator. This it's thing an incubator. Okay. Yeah, so it's three months. Yeah. You also get funding. So that was my first seed funding. I was like, wow, I have yeah. extra yeah. money. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So they give her $120,000 and they uh, basically coach you for those three months and they help you uh, basically grow your company. You know, so I went in with about 26,000 users and as I said, we've kind of 10x that. Um, and that was about two and a half years ago or so Excellent. that I did that program. So they really, and, and I built a, a whole new website. Yeah. Um, we didn't have an app at the time, so they helped me understand how to build an app. So, and just the importance of understanding how to grow week on week as well. Yeah. Um, and a key part of Y Combinator is just to make sure that, you know, as a founder, that you're remembering that your customer is what's really important yes. and to make something that people love. Yeah. Not that they're indifferent about, yeah. you know, but yeah. they actually love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's when I realized as well, because there's some people have sort of said to me, you know, you're doing really well mm-hmm. in urban. Do you want to come out of urban? Mm-hmm. And I realized, well, because I want to build something that people love, I want to double down on that. I don't want to be a platform just for everything, a generic, a yeah. generic yeah. platform. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want it to be like, when you think of Shubs.com, you know what you're going to get, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was a phenomenal and it's a huge demographic. It's interesting they would say to you, would you like to be more generalized? When in reality, the urban... Uh, sector is huge, right? Because yeah. you can think comedy events, music events, theatre. There's probably lots of things that are perceived to be urban, absolutely, and are popular. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, absolutely, you said the different types mm. of uh, events, comedy, theatre, uh, but even within music itself. Yeah. Urban mm. is now the number one form of genre around mm-hmm. the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's been proven by streaming sites such mm. as Spotify. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top uh, three sp- um, artists that have had the most streams of last year were all um, hip hop rappers. Mm. Um, urban is the biggest uh, genre across the world, regardless of language, geography, or wherever they may be, yeah. it is urban. Yeah. Um, and actually in the US for the first time, urban is now outperforming rock and pop as well, really? right? Yeah. So this is the growth area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't necessarily go into it because mm-hmm. it was a growth area when I started it. Mm-hmm. I went to it because I was deeply mm-hmm. passionate about Absolutely. it. And again, I would say to an entrepreneur as well that if you're thinking about doing a, a, a business, and you, you want, you're thinking about what kind of idea should I build upon? I think you should do something that you're actually really passionate about. You know, I mean, even if I look back in my life, although I had a period when I was in banking, Mm. I can actually connect the dots and see, actually, I've always been involved in music and events. I didn't know that, you know, fast forward 10 years, I'd be the CEO of Shubs.com. But actually, now looking back, it actually makes sense because everything I was doing Mm. was building up until this point. Mm. And so I'd really recommend that if people are thinking about, you know, getting into entrepreneurship, they do something they're actually uniquely passionate about. And what do they always enjoy? Mm-hmm. As opposed to just thinking about, let me the just... money. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. build the, the Uber for this. Yeah. You know, yes. everyone's yes. coming up with that. Let me yeah. build the Uber for dogs. Or yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't like dogs. No, they don't like dogs. They hate dogs. They haven't touched a dog. Exactly. They're allergic to dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're going to build the Uber, Uber for yeah, dogs yeah. because that sounds like a great yeah, area. Yeah. Everyone yeah. loves their pets, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uber's a big thing now. Yeah. So, because, and the reason why, Mm. it's not just because you have perhaps a domain expertise in something you're passionate about, but also because business is actually hard. It's tough. It's tough. Mm. And that's the reality. Mm. You know, I'm I'm here now, uh, you know, with a successful business, 
But there were tough times. And the only reason why I kept going... It's a passion. It's a passion. Mm. Absolutely. I say this all the time because there's, you know, the sleepless nights, the working non-stop, the friends and family complaining they don't see you. Yeah. All of that is hard. So if you are not passionate about what you're doing, you won't overcome those obstacles. You'll just think... You know, I could go back to my job, yeah. go back to my salary, go back to a life where your parents aren't saying, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> so it, you have to have that passion. And whilst yeah. we're on that topic, what are what has been your greatest um, or your biggest difficulty or challenges in the business? So one of my difficulties was, as I said, I, I am not, I'm not technical. Um, and actually, you know, although I was, you know, rebelling and trying to get into Y Combinator, although I'm not technical, I do understand why they want some technical expertise. Yes. If you are building a website, an app, and that's a core of the business, mm. um, because I'm not technical, it means that I've kind of had to learn the hard way by, you know, using developers that have kind of overpromised. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, judge. Yeah. We've been in the hate. <laughs> yeah, been yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, it's it's a bit, yeah. So. That has been a bit of a challenge. Mm. Um, I now am a bit more clued up. I now have a range of advisors that can actually help me in mm. that process as well. And that's what I think is really key, that even if you are going, going to be a solo founder with perhaps a small team, try and build a network of mentors mm. and advisors, because there are going to be gaps in your knowledge, gaps in your personal knowledge and in your teams. Mm. So if you can reach out to one of your advisors and say, right, you know, this developer or this lawyer or this whatever has sort of said this, what do you think? you know and kind of tap into what their expertise as well so mm -hmm. that was definitely a challenge and I've been able to overcome that by building a network of advisors um, I would say fundraising as mm -hmm. well it's been interesting always a challenge. Um, yeah For I mean yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely always a challenge definitely um, going, going over Silicon Valley definitely helps getting that first seed investment mm -hmm. um, they also put me in front of other investors and I was, I was able to subsequently Excellent. raise a bit more money from that as well um, but yeah, yeah, definitely fundraising is always a challenge. So that brings us on nicely to um, what are your, has been your greatest achievements in the business so far? Greatest achievements? Um, I mean, I think like just overall, um, I a, a proud moment for me is you know the fact that I can now go on a train or something and see someone like on my app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like wow, they're looking at the app that yeah. I built, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and those are really kind of proud moments for me. Sure. Um, and even for my parents, we were talking about, you know, your parents want you to do traditional safe jobs. You know, now my dad sees posters that have shubs.com on them and he's constantly taking photos of them and sending yeah. them to me and go, wow, I understand what you do now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? um, and they're definitely really proud moments for me. And I think, you know, a key achievement for the business is working with some of the top event organizers in the world. Mm. Um, play, people like, such as um, Live Nation, which is the biggest concert promoter in the entire world, that own Ticketmaster, mm. um, you know, are now one of our clients. You know, they work with us with for urban events. And that's, you know, phenomenal achievement in the mm. sense of, they don't need to, because yeah. they already have Ticketmaster. Sure. And so by them working with us, they see the strength in what we have built yeah. specifically for the urban audience. Mm. You know, I wanted to build the dominant go-to place for the urban audience to discover great events. And when Live Nation came on board, I felt like, I think I've done it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or I'm, yeah. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on right track there, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So yeah, that was definitely a great, great Fantastic. moment. So what advice would you give someone who's kind of considering starting their own business, but kind of struggling getting started? Yeah. Um, so I think like, any form of momentum is really key because, um, you know, as I sort of said earlier, that we, you know, we're all human beings who have doubts and are scared of things and have fear. And when you have an idea, as, as I mentioned in my story, I think it's really important to get started with something as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're there watching this, you think, oh, I've had this idea and I'm sitting on for a while, just take action immediately. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as this you know, recording finishes, <laughs> yes. yeah. like, take action, like, do something. Um, for me, that was ca calling my local business advisor. There are businesses, business um, advice centers throughout the country. Mm -hmm. There really are, okay? If there's not one five minutes from you, I'm sure there's one 20 minutes from you, right? Get on the phone, Google this as well, find a center that can help you. And they'll be able to help you with your business plan, um, you know, forecasting, your budget, just really help you kind of shape this idea that you have. 
Um, or perhaps even get a mentor as well, you know, and you could perhaps find a mentor by going to startup events. Yeah. Go to startup events, perhaps there's someone on a panel, someone that you network with in the breaks, someone perhaps a bit more experienced than you are, a bit further along, that they can be your accountability partner or your mentor. Trying to do something mm -hmm. immediately, I think it's really, really important. Um, you know, so as I said, well, I did created the business plan, um, and then I, after that, got a mentor and then built the website. So yeah, I mean, just just get going with it. Yeah. Like yeah. don't don't sit on it because yeah, if yeah. you do, fear will creep in. Yeah, like, it really will, yes. and it will talk you out of it. It'll yeah. be like, why would you quit your stable mm. nine to five yeah. to start yeah. a business? Uh, yes. that yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? It probably doesn't. Yeah. But like, you know what? The beauty th the beauty is that a lot of things that are worth doing mm. like don't seem to make sense at the beginning, right? Mm. They're not for everybody. I get mm. that absolutely. But if you want to start a business, just go for it and do something small immediately. Yeah. Do you think anyone can be an entrepreneur? Um, I don't. I don't know if I do. Or, or I think, I think, I th I th you know what? I think, um, no, I would say that anybody can okay. if they are able to get out of various, uh, perhaps, limiting beliefs they might have right so i would say that because i all I, you know aside from entrepreneur i believe that we're all here to do great things on this mm -hmm. earth right mm -hmm. and we all have amazing abilities yeah. okay to leave our stamp our legacy on this earth mm -hmm. i really do believe that mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, you know, throughout life, there are various things that may happen that create limiting beliefs in us mm -hmm. that, you know, make us people that, you know, perhaps are insecure or, you know, are, are not are not brave enough to just take action. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the traits that you need as an entrepreneur are being courageous. Mm -hmm. Resilience mm -hmm. is really key as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so those, just those two things, mm -hmm. I think, uh, there's some people who don't have that as yet because of whatever sure. happened in, in life. And I think yeah. if you can try and build that, work mm -hmm. on your personal development, which I think is really key, which is what I do. I, mm -hmm. I definitely you know, work on my craft in mm -hmm. terms of my business, but I'm constantly working on business business development. You know, Absolutely. I'm constantly working yeah. on trying to improve my personal skills as well, sure. yeah. um, so I can be a better leader, a mm. better entrepreneur. Mm. And so. I think if they can overcome mm. those things, absolutely, they could be an entrepreneur. Why and like not? you said, you could have, you can be the visionary. You can be the person that has the idea, and then employ the people who have the skill sets. So you weren't technical, but yeah. you had someone who could create the app and the website for you. Yeah. Right. So it's about being yeah, able vision. to bring bring the yeah. right people together to make your vision a reality. Isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because if you have, especially if you have a burning desire for something, you know, I don't think because oh, I haven't, you know, I can't code, or I haven't got, you know, I'm I'm not, I haven't got this type of skill, so mm. I can't do it. Well, no, not necessarily. You can find a whole range of people to help you. Yeah. And actually, most businesses are started that way. Most mm. people have the idea and perhaps send someone else to manufacture it for them or mm. build a website, in my case. Mm. What advice would you give the younger you? Oh, the younger me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still quite young. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I was trying to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we were younger yesterday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, wow. Um... The younger me, I would say, I think I would actually say perhaps enjoy the journey more. Um, I'm starting to enjoy the journey more now, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, you know, every day we're, we're, we're growing, there's, there's, there's more great achievements in the business. And I think, wow, like little Louise, you know, in 2010 that had mm -hmm. the idea, probably couldn't even see that we'd achieve what we've achieved today. Mm -hmm. um, but there were times where I was, not in the moment enjoying mm. the journey but kind of waiting for this the and that's yeah waiting mm. for the next thing mm. and actually there's so much beauty in just enjoying like the small things that happen throughout the day and it is about the journey and I, i'm recognizing that more and more in business Excellent. you know it's not about i think especially for a lot, a lot of young people who perhaps here especially from silicon valley these young companies that sell for a billion dollars like right i'm gonna start a business so i can exit you yeah, know and they're just thinking yeah. about that mm. um and actually you know if you exit that's fantastic right and mm. i'm not going to discourage anyone for doing that or for having those dreams mm. but enjoy today absolutely right mm. you get a client who says yes who comes on board yeah. you know if they give you 10 pounds or whatever it may be like mm. enjoy mm. that moment celebrate the moment celebrate yeah. it always yeah. be like grateful and have gratitude mm. and i think mm. I would just tell my younger self, like, you've got ambition, which is great. I love that, Louise. Mm. But, like, enjoy this yeah, moment. Enjoy, enjoy the yeah. journey. So what are the goals um, for the business? 
Um, yeah, so I definitely want to build a global company. Um, that's 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 one of the key goals yeah. for me. Absolutely, I think um, it. You know, Shubs is doing really well in London. We are growing organically throughout the UK. We actually haven't done that much in terms of marketing or sales. Any uh, sort of events we have in other cities such as Birmingham, Manchester have come to us organically. I'd definitely like to grow throughout the UK and across the world, absolutely. So um, if you got the right offer, would you sell the business? Um, well, that is a good question. Because <laughs> you just made a comment about yeah, it. Like, oh, 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 oh. And now she might say one. yes. <laughs> so someone in Silicon Valley, you know, they, they put a, a seven figure um, check on the desk. Yeah. And slide it over to you slowly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I am open. Uh, you're, open <laughs> you're open to I'm negotiation. I'm open, exactly, to <laughs> all the possibilities. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm open to all possibilities, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, when that time comes, if it does come, which would be great, you know, I guess I'll review where I am yeah. and um, sort of see what's best for the business. Um, but, you know, I think... Especially, like, I really feel a sense of, you know, being um, a woman and a black woman at that, you know. So, you know, I tick all those kind of minority boxes. Like, mm. I think I, I, I actually do feel like I, I want to do this as well for the female entrepreneurs out there, mm. you know, and for the people of colour out there that are, that are you know, want to be entrepreneurs in the sense that we need more role models, right? And so whenever I think about my success, this is not just about me. I feel like I'm doing it, yeah. you know what I mean, for a range of people that are perhaps Absolutely, will look yeah. at me as a role model as well, mm. right? And I think, um, I mean, it's fantastic to build an empire as big as the likes of Google and stuff like that, and know that that's owned by a minority, mm -hmm. you know, a female, a black woman, mm -hmm. uh, will be absolutely fantastic. Sure. And so, you know, if I can get there, if I can help someone else along that way as well, that'd be awesome. As opposed to exiting when it perhaps might be too early. Right. If that yeah, makes sense. Sure. Do you have another another passion though? Because you know, it's yeah. one of those things, situations where you, you invested everything in this because that was your passion. Yeah. But along the way, have you seen another problem that you really want to solve? that if you had sold this business, you could start something new? Is there, is that inside you yet? Or are you still so focused on ships? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think this might be true for all sort of entrepreneurs. I think that, you know, we are, uh, yeah, we're problem solvers and creative. So, you know, every day I see a, a problem, I'm like, oh, someone should do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they're not, that, that's a business, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so I have those ideas constantly, constantly, okay. constantly, I do. Um, but I think like, in terms of my passion right now, I mean, it is music, it is events. Okay. And um, so this is what I want to do right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I have literally a book full of like so many ideas. Oh, really? Yeah, like honestly, I'm always like, oh wow. You know, right um, down, yeah. yeah, some of them, a few years later, people have done. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> you know? This is what happens when you sit on an idea, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And actually what's really funny as well, even with Shubs, mm. is that I meet people all the time that tell me, I had the idea for Shubs back in 2000, or, you know. Well done. You know, exactly. yeah. And then what happened? I know, I know. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so why do you do it? Yeah. And uh, well, you know, and, uh, you know, and then it, yeah, yeah. and it just, so yeah. I can't, I'm thankful they did yeah, it, yes, right? But that's it. I mean, most ideas are probably not that new. unique and new in yes. the sense of you probably are not the only person who thought Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. But you might have been the only person that had the guts to actually execute and it, it and do it, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's what the difference is, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, you don't want to be someone who just has a book full of ideas and never does one of them. Sure. You want to try and do some of them, mm. you know. So if you can just let us know what your socials are, so anybody who's interested in following the journey story or even... Um, Engaging and investing. Engaging and investing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you let us know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so you can find me on Twitter. I'm, uh, I'm on Twitter at Louise Brony. And I'm also on LinkedIn under my full name, Louise Brony Mensa. So please do get in touch. And the business? The business, obviously, as well. The business is at Shubs Online. And that's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the works. And Shubs.com for the website. Yes, and Shubs.com for the website. Fantastic. Absolutely. And we have an app. Okay. So if you have an iPhone, that is, you can uh, download our app. Okay. All right, and final question. Can you give us your top three best books to read? Okay. Um, so I would say the first book is a book called Essentialism. Okay. And that is all about um, staying focused on what is essential, right, and doing that and focusing on that. So we all know that 
you just shouldn't really have a number of priorities. You should have a priority. Mm-hmm. Um, focus on that. And that's been really helpful for me in my business because there's always so much to do. Mm-hmm. Um, the second book I'd recommend is a book called Profit First. And um, that's a book that talks about like understanding we sometimes, you know, perhaps think about profit at the very end and our accountant says, this is your profit mm. because we normally think about sales, expenses and the little crumbs afterwards. And this book just reinforces that actually you can control profit to some degree and actually mm. think about profit first. Yep. Kind of following on from the concept like pay yourself first, okay. but pay your profit first. Right. And then what you have left is your expenses, mm-hmm. right? Just to try and build a healthy, sustainable business. Mm-hmm. That's really important. Okay. Um, and the third book is probably a book which is a bit more of a spiritual book, which is a book called Power of Now. And Power of Now is all about staying present and focusing on the now, um, especially as an entrepreneur, there's always so much that you want to do. You know, it's great that you're ambitious and got loads of great ideas. But as I said earlier, enjoy the journey, be present and think about the now. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louise. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Honestly, I could talk to you forever and I think you're a fantastic role model. So thank you. Likewise, you guys are awesome as well. Thank Thank you you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We are finished for today. Like, comment, subscribe, share with anybody that might find this interesting. Thank you. See you on the other side.